Welcome everybody for more Heroes of the Storm action here at the Road to BlizzCon Qualifier number one for Europe. Today we are in the round of 32 and we have once again a best of three series of course. Rocket versus Huron Team. And you probably know both of these teams already. Huron Team is an up and coming team that is still looking for an organization. A Spanish team at that. And Rocket of course, I don't really think I have to introduce these boys. We are on Curse Tolo in the first game of a best of three series. And we're even seeing Leoric being played today since Rocket relies on a double tank setup. And Leoric is actually pretty good when you're running a double tank. Besides that, they're also in a position where they are playing both majors. They play Jaina and they play Kel'thas on the first map here. They're of course excellent heroes to have on a map like Cursed Hollow because of those fights around the tributes. And on the other side, we're seeing an opening with a Johanna here for Huron team and they are playing two specialists. Nazebo is extremely popular these days because he's being is able to put out siege damage and also a lot of hero damage over time and we're having Zagara then in the mix as well. So very solid set up for both of the teams here and we're gonna go into the ma first map to find out which team will take the lead in the best of three here at the road to BlizzCon qualifier number one. Game number one, everybody, in our best of three series here at the Road to BlizzCon tournament, the European Open, the first qualifier. And as you can see, we are on Cursed Hollow. We have our best of three series here in the round of 32 between Huron and Rocket. The Spanish team to the left side of the map with Vipelino playing Johanna. We have Alastor on Azebo, Shad today on Vala, Red X on Zagara, and the support for the team Rave on Rega. To the right side of the map, it is the German team. We have Rocket with Hazops on Jaina. Sport Billy is rocking Leoric here. We have Shadowmar on Malfurion, Chris on Kalthas, and Zocker on Anubarak. So a double warrior setup for the team to the right side for Team Rocket. I'm Kaldo with Miss Tetcher, and we're going to bring you the coverage here, the road to BlizzCon once again. Yep, and having a look at the talents level one, we have a very globe focused build coming out from the side of Rocket with the reanimation from Leoric, the Manor Addict from Kael'thas and the Regeneration Master from Anubarak. And just both teams clearing waves at the moment. Yurik trying to get some good damage down onto Johanna, but Johanna pops her passive to keep at least most of her health. Exactly. Now, the team composition that we have right now, of course, the most important thing about the team composition for Team Rocket is that double warrior setup that we are seeing. We have two mage heroes trying to deliver damage in the later stages of the game with not only Jaina, but then also, of course, Kel'thas. So two very strong AoE heroes, which is amazing on a map like Cursed Hollow. And if we're looking to the side of Huron, they are currently running three damage dealers, two of them being specialists that can also push in lanes pretty fast. But with them having not only Zagara and Azeba, but also Bala, they have a lot of wave clear and also a lot of damage in those team fights. They really do, and the one talent choice that I would just like to point out, it's not too out of the ordinary, but the deep chill talent on the Jaina, sometimes on the very odd occasion, we will see Jainas go with the extra range on the Ice Lance on this map when they have a Malfurion on their team, just so they get that extra mana and have a much longer range harass for Tribute Denial. Yeah, the tribute denials are going to be also possible because of the composite error that we're seeing, of course, on the side of the other team. We have on Malfurion, the Moonburn that he's currently executing here. Zagara at the bottom lane has to deal with Sport Billy on Leoric, and the new hero, of course, with his skeletal swing, has quite a bit of wave clear, but since he's still a melee hero, he needs to be careful against Red X, who is currently controlling that lane and trying, of course, to drain those two towers from their ammunition. Yeah, but here we go, Vipolino coming in for a gank here, Haswop's getting dropped very low, and down he goes, that is going to be first blood over to Huron. Really good rotation that we saw there on the map, and apparently in the mid lane, Sokka didn't realize that his, uh, yeah, this opponent was already gone, so just like that, Vipolino moving over in, and making sure that he gets all of the experience here, so no experience lost for this attack, and that was a very nice rotation that we saw from Huron team. They're going into the max damage build, by the way, on Vala, going straight for that puncturing arrow together with the composite arrow. So we can expect Frost Shot on level 13, but still a repeating arrow maybe even on level 7. You have different choices with this particular setup right now on level 1 and level 4, but a repeating arrow would give you the maximum damage that you can dish out with Vala in those fights. Yep, it is the duelist build that we see a lot of the time. Very mana intensive, but with a full damage team, it, Valor just needs to get her damage down and hopefully they'll be able to burst someone very quickly. Kael'thas taking the risk against all this damage and going with the gathering power to just get, well, all those extra stacks as long as he can pick off the very squishy 
assassins and specialists of Huron. Yeah, Sport Bill is really low down here at the first tribute. On level 4 he picked Hardened Bones, so he takes less damage during the Wrath Walk, which is actually really nice for him. We're gonna talk about that ability in just a second, but he's getting healed by Shadow Ma right now. Could have maybe even gone back. Now Shadow Ma on Malfurion will have to use a lot of his heals to simply keep Leoric alive in this fight. Leoric though, not going too aggressive though, he's just distracting Red X for the moment. He does have a Hunter Killer on him and has to retreat behind his wall though. Still staying in the fight, Rave attempting to steal this tribute, but Hasselhobbs and Sokka and Shadowmare more than ready to deny this. And with Shadowmare's Alun's Grace, he could deny this all day. Yeah, exactly. That's what he currently does. Yeah, the Alun's Grace allows you to get extra range on your basic abilities, and that's something that Shadowmare is currently just using over and over again to cancel the tribute channel. Nazebo is starting a rotation from the top lane to the mid lane, as you might have seen already on the minimap. It's also pretty cool that we are having once again Feral Heart taken on Rega instead of the potential Shadow Wolf now that he has a level 1 mana reduction talent on his chain heal, and that allows him to stay in lane basically forever. So he's not going to have any problems with his mana generation to keep his team alive at this tribute fight. Leoric having to use his Wraith Walk to get behind the wall does have his fountain up so he will be fine. Tribute still trying to be taken by Vipolito but is being denied. Jada very far out of position though and we can see Rhaegar and Valor going in onto her but Dane now has help and they're turning around onto Valor. In comes a Nubarak trying to burst her down and Shadowbear gets the final hit. No, sorry, it was a Nubarak who got it. Really well done. At the same time, we have Jaina still in a bit of trouble. Alistar needed to move away on his Nazebo to the left side as well, but they're turning around trying to go now for Malfurion. Rafe is about to slow him down, but the totem is already in cooldown. They're going straight for Malfurion here and Rhaegar might be even able to get him. Ah, Zagara just a bit too far away. Hazops Ooh. also low gets healed in the last second and Rocket gets away without losing. Losing a single hero. And while all that was happening, that big chase, Zagara was finally able to pick up that tribute. So the first tribute going over to Huron. They are a tiny bit ahead in XP, but it's already equaled up due to the fact that Rockat have gone straight back to the lanes. One of the things that was really important here in those fights as well was that we saw Nazebo rotating from the top lane to the mid lane and back again to capture every single wave. That's why they are currently even in a slight experience lead. Now on level 7 we have Vala indeed with that repeating arrow that we've talked about earlier. And for the Skeleton King it is the renewal that gives him... It's basically like a healing potion that you have. And that's of course the extra sustain in those fights that you need. Good shield glare here already moving in to dodge that tribute being ending up in the hands of Rocket and once again that fight as down to the bot lane still Leoric and Zagara dancing their dance for experience and the push on the lane. Jal and Chris exchanging blows over here. Johanna taking a lot of damage does not have a trait up so she goes down to Hasuobs here and Hasuobs is okay will chase Alistair out of this area and giving Chris time to pick up the tribute. The corner of Cole definitely finishing the job taking down Johanna and the tanky tank already out of commission and just like that we have all of a sudden two kills against one and a tribute for each team. The teams are still very even when it comes to experience as you can see both of them on level 9. We're seeing for the mid lane now for Zokon is a Nuburak, now also the Leeching Scarabs on level 7, so he's going to have a lot of sustain, not only with this level 7 talent, but also thanks to the Regeneration Master that he picked up on level 1. Yep, huge amount of sustain he's going to get out of this. Vipolino, just clearing waves at the moment. He can tank a lot of the damage that he's getting from Jaina and Anubrak here. Level 10s have now been hit for Rocket and Huron just shortly after. The March of the Black King taken again for Leori here. We're having, of course, a Phoenix Web Blast, Tranquility and Water Elemental being used on the side of Rocket besides that. The Blessed Shield, a Reign of Vengeance, more Gary the Gargantuan and Ancestral Healing have been used by the Spanish team. Huron is trying to utilize those now to get another tribute as it's spawning on the map already. This is one of those big team fights that we're now having come in. Oh, at the top lane! Look at that! Oh my god! Chris nearly dying! What a great setup by Shed. Really nice move by Vala, but an amazing gravity lapse in the last second saves Kelthas, and just like that, he's able to escape. Johanna just rolling through here with her Iron Skin crate, trying to do as much damage. And that is the best march of the Black King I have ever seen, catching pretty much everyone. 
Vipolito dropped super low. Bless Shield though, tried so down, but it's rooted by Malfurion and will go down. Kale, we see the Yuri just Rave walk through there. He's continuing to charge through this, uses his Drain Hope on Alistair, but with Rave, he's taking a lot of damage. He got lowered down, he goes. But in the meantime, we will be able to see Rockat pick up this tribute. Vala dying as well in the back end. Yeah, that was actually Leoric having a lot of fun there. But as you could already see, <laughs> he was lacking a bit of support. But he still created a lot of space for the rest of his team. And that resulted in them picking up the second tribute now as well. So just like this, Rocket is a little bit ahead, has the second tribute. And we also have them in a slight lead in experience. At the top lane, the Siege Giants that were taken earlier on by Huron team were able to do some damage to the wall and break through the gate. Chris still alive here. Might lose that gate after all the tower. And yes, indeed he does. But still, in this situation, still a lead for Rocket. And they are probably, ah, well, they're actually in a pretty good spot. The next tribute is one of those that Huron team will have to fight for, for sure, since they want to avoid the curse. Yep, and Kael'thas just slowly creeping his way up in stacks as well. Currently on two. is just getting little picks, little assists in each fight. So, and without going down himself, he's putting himself in a good position for these very important tribute fights that are coming up. Yeah, it's actually going to be very interesting how those team fights will end right now. There's like a, a bit of a question here in general when it comes to the heroics that we have. Of course, Leoric still being a new hero, and most of the time we see March of the Black King taken in competitive play. The interesting thing though is that while the heroic ability is pretty cool in those close quarters where we see the tribute spawn, you could have gone for Entomb and just tried to combo that with the Blizzard and the Flame Strike as well as a Phoenix. So there is something to be said for both of these heroics, but in this case, Rocket is running it with the march of the black king already coming to play here comes the wrath walk but sport billy can't really close the distance yet yeah but lyric has taken the crushing hope so it's an extra 10 percent damage to every target there's the curse going over to rock out and they're going straight on to vipolito here so much damage ancestral does not go down in time and he gets taken out that level 13 talent doing so much right now leoric moving in once again and there comes the gravity lapse lifting alistar alistar trying to escape here is a bit too slow though and just like that nazebo now down as well with the extra talent that rocket was able to pick up before that tribute fight started they are in an amazing position and they are using it sport billy once again with the rap rock starting to move in but they are a bit too slow to really make something happen here socket trying desperately to just knock up Zagara here but not really making this happen and finally here's the extra talent also for the Spanish team but they are already cursed and now have to defend their structures they have to defend but there's not much they can do Chris gonna be grabbing at that bottom lane for the top fort is being pushed very hard by a minion wave and the entirety of Rockat are grouped in the mid lane pushing it down that fort as well. And there's very little that Huron can do about it. So they're trying to defend or at least harass as best as they can. The curse will be over in five seconds, so they will defend this for now. As already expected, Frost Shot was picked up on level 13. So Vala has not only a lot of damage on her side in those team fights, but can now also start to control the opponent's team a bit with that extra slow that she has. Especially important when you're dealing with a hero like Inuburak or even, of course, Leoric. It's still that level lead that we're seeing for Rocket, but of course, one team fight is all that you need to really turn this match around here. And that's exactly what Huron is currently hoping for. We have them also with a burning rage on level 13 now for Inuburak, so a bit of extra damage that we're seeing for the team. And just to give you a bit of an idea of what we're having here in damage, there's also the stats for that. Especially, of course, Leoric here with the siege damage up at the top together with Kel'thas at 54,000. Yep, and on the damage count, we can see Zagara leading pretty much everyone. Here comes the engagement from the side of Rock and Leoric just wading his way through here. Yeah, moving in with the back march of the Black King once again. Oh, Alistair just barely staying alive, but at the same time, Zagar is in a little bit of trouble as we're seeing Blizzard and also Flamestrike coming down here. Everybody on the side of Huron is so low, a great more, but it might not be enough. Red X is about to die here, gets healed in the last second, but it's already a bit too late. And Johanna is now dead as well. They were trying to go for the boss, but we saw Rocket rotate immediately, and they are now moving in to take the boss at the bot lane. And there's very little that Huron can do about that since they are currently in a 3 versus 5 situation in this game. Yeah, Sport Billy trying to soak in the bot lane just because he could and then immediately walking into the Golem stun. But they will be able to get this super easily. And we also saw an incredible gank from over the wall there by Anubarak on the retreating uh, on the retreating Johanna there. Yeah, we also now have Ignite, of course, on the side for Rocket with the Kel'thas, who now gets a massive power spike in this game. The two damage dealers that we are seeing for Rocket are definitely putting work in. And with now the Golem moving down the bot lane, they can easily move into the middle, take the fort, and 
that currently looks like they're trying to even take maybe a keep up at the top lane. They're going for an Azebo now first, though Alistar, oh. oh my god, in the last second able to TP back. That was a very close call. Yeah, that was very close indeed. And we're going to be seeing Huron start on their own mercenaries because they need to get some kind of counter pressure on. But in the meantime, Rocket are in the top lane grabbing their own boss and the tribute has spawned right next to them. Now we also have Johanna moving in again to, with Burning Rage, now easily take one of those camps solo. It's pretty easy actually if you're in a situation where you're using your own Night Take Spawn on level 1 together with the Burning Rage to get one of those camps on your own. The problem really is that we have no level 16 for Huron just yet and with that Tribute spawning here, they really desperately need that talent. They're moving back since they realize it's not going to happen in time, so they give up one Tribute and they can do that since it's going to be the first one for Rocket in this new Tribute phase. Yeah, so not too much pressure coming down just for that particular tribute, but this does position Rockat very well to continue pushing with their boss. Leoric right, just chilling in the mid lane, soaking XP. Yeah, soaking experience for his team, trying to get them further to level 20. Having the boss now going straight for the wall here. Ah, oh, good Phoenix, the Root, Blizzard, all these AoE spells that are now coming into play are so difficult to dodge. The 16 is finally in the hands of Huron, and they're trying to use it to withstand this onslaught. Fanatism has been used on level 13 now, or level 16 now for Johanna. And still that boss moving in. Johanna has to use a trade to get back here. Iron skin already used and now on cooldown as Red X is getting low as well. Needs to be healed up. But they get the boss in the end and the keep is still alive. Yeah, and Kale Fats is on full stacks here. So we can see him just throwing spells backwards to cut off any kind of chase coming out from her on. Now when it comes to damage, by the way, hero damage, we have 20,000 on the side of Kalfas and Jaina, but it's 31,000 for Zagara, and also a lot on the side of Nazebo. The battle is starting once again, and the March of the Black King already being used. Here comes a great rain of vengeance, but Vala goes down regardless. Vipolino with a really good condemn, but it just doesn't matter. Everybody's moving away, and Leoric is still alive, as is Hazops. He might die. There's a quick ancestral healing thrown out. Red X dying nearly to that one elemental, surviving the last second. Hazops dying after all, but it is still Team Rocket who picks up the second trip. Flame Strikes continuing to come down, though. Red X being dropped super low, and Chris is going to have another one of those. Gets the knock up onto Johanna, but she is going to go down, and you get it, gets it onto Alistair as well. Alistair having to pull back here. He is next to Rave, so we'll get the healing, but Sport Billy, he wants blood. He's going in with the Wraith Walk. Yeah, he's going with the Wraith Walk once again. Here comes the swing. Tries to just slow Alistair down a bit so that he can close the distance once again. Wraith and Alistair are both very low, but they're trying to push Sport Billy as much as they can. Nice wall of zombies completely denying him. Lee, but yes, they take him down really well done. They save the keep. They take down Leoric, who of course in ghost form still sticks around and tries to slow them down so that the rest of the team can escape without harm. Yeah, but that hard and bone talent there was not enough to keep the Orica alive there. It was already too low before he tried to rape and walk out of there. Yeah. And we're going to see Rocket continue to regroup up and get ready to maybe contest the tribute, but without Leoric, or at least with only Ghost Leoric, they're going to have a bit of trouble with it. But he's reviving very quickly. He will, in fact, be ready for this. Yeah, he's going to be ready for the fight for sure, and he's already moving in here. Vipolino trying to shield clear him, apparently. That doesn't work, my friend. <laughs> so he's going for the Condemn now. The Tribute not picked up yet. It, it would be the third Tribute. For, oh my god, the damage against Nazebo. Just barely able to get away here. And Rega with another heal, getting him at least to one-fourth or one-third of his oh. health again. Uh-oh. Oh! Wow. <laughs> barely surviving this one. So close indeed. Valfurian was zoned out there by the Gargantuan, but... We did see Rockat able to kill it off. Vipaluno denying with the shield game. March of the Black King rolls forward, but we're going to see Sport Billy go down here. And Soccer turning onto the Johanna. Web Blast has been used. And Sport Billy just hanging around here, slowing down everyone in this fight. Soccer bursts to the other side of the ball, so he's in the tranquility. And the Water Elemental has been killed off. So currently one to one in this fight, and it will continue. Nazebo down thanks to the living bomb that was applied by the flame strike, and they're moving in again. The problem is that Huron team has to fight for this one, and they know it as well. There's oh, another flame rip. strike, and the Phoenix Red X still surviving, but Sport, Sport Billy, Billy is already <laughs> following him, trying to use his skills to just somehow drop in once he revives. That's not gonna happen, but it's another curse now against Huron as Shadow March has picked up tribute number three. Yeah, and this is a huge problem for Huron. That's two curses in a row for Team Rocket. They're going to be able to grab this boss, and once again, they can put huge amounts of pressure onto this bottom lane, and we will more than likely see that keep going down. 
Now, once more, we have that boss, of course, being taken here in level 20. is just around the corner, which is another big, big problem right now for the red team, uh, for the blue team, of course. So just like that, we have them already in pr problems up at the top lane, where the keep is on half HP. The bottom lane is being pushed. The mid lane is being attacked now as well, as once again, we're seeing Rocket moving in, and they are so close to level 20 now. The next talent is going to hit in just a second. <laughs> that will be a major advantage here for Rocket. We see the Blessed Shield is now down from Johanna as Anubrak was able to borrow charge out of that. So that is one of the main engage abilities of Huron will not be available for the next fight. And because of that, Rocket going very aggressively onto this keep. And just in fact that they have a boss in the bottom lane that needs to be dealt with. And this keep will go down. Yep, the bottom keep is being attacked, the one in the top lane already down, and as you can see as the level 20 ability, we have on the side of Leoric the Death March now being used, which applies the base version of Drain Hope to all enemies in a large area, and that means that you get a lot of that. That's a lot of damage that is incoming on this level 20 talent, and Sport Billy was already very annoying to deal with in the first place, but right now it's even trickier, and up at the top lane it looks like Rocket really wants to go for this boss, even without the level 20 talent, who team has to do something about it and they are moving in to deny it and try to turn this game around. Yeah, and Rocket trying to show that they're still doing the boss to try and bait in Huron team. Sport Billy rolling very far forward here and Soccer as well. Sport Billy having to Wraith Walk to get himself into a safer position. Flame Strike does land. There's the web blast onto Johanna and the engage coming from the Jada. Immediately the Ancestral healing saving Alistair. Of course, once again, the more trying to lock them down. The Phoenix is already in place. The Soccer jumps in once again. And here comes that slow shot, that frost shot that we've been talking about earlier. Really well done by Shad, making sure that they can't be chased down. They are just trying to buy themselves a bit more time to get level 20 if they hit the next talent then at least they will be able to fight on eye level with their opponents they lost the keep at the top lane already which is quite annoying but at the bot lane they still can rely on one of the structures and also in the mid lane the level 20 talent is really all that matters for now and Alistar is trying to get them exactly that but he is of course being hunted immediately yeah, he's so close. He just has to be this immediate. He'll finally get it off of this minion wave with the help of his frogs. There is that level 20, and we can immediately see Rocket backing away from that boss. They don't want to fight on even. They want to fight when they are ahead. So they're going to disengage and look for a more advantageous positioning as they no longer have that talent advantage. There's going to be a lot of healing from Rega now. Already before, he had the tidal waves and healing surge, which really helps him with his healing numbers. Now he can even rely upon Rewind, which is a great talent for him to have. Also, the escape talents that we have on all of the three damage dealers on Azebo, Bala and Zagara are going to help out so much in these battles, especially against the Phoenix, the Flame Strike, and the Blizzard. They are locking down Zocket. He gets zero again, again. Oh, here comes the Web Blast, and immediately another Phoenix also hitting home as Alistair is trying to rush away. Sport Billy is not even in the fight just yet. He's moving in from the other side, trying to flank them. Goes in with another skeleton swing. Here comes the March of the Black King, but only hitting one target. Ancestral hitting already being used as Sokka engages again, but dies on his new. Sport Billy continuing to roll the front line, pops the indestructible on Vipolito, but he's getting dropped quite low himself, but he is in that tranquility, so he will keep himself alive. And currently, Huron coming out a bit ahead, but that flame strike lands onto Alistair. He gets the heal from the Rhaegar, though, so he is still in it. These teams will continue fighting for this, but currently, Huron a bit ahead, unless that happens. Three man flame strike, and Leoric chasing in to try and gain some positioning. Wow, that really hurt just now. The th three man flame strike doing some work. Sport Billy is going deep, maybe a bit too deep. And yes, indeed, there's Vipolino with a quick condemn. And down goes Leoric. He went a bit too much YOLO there. But Vipolino about to die. No heal. And he goes down. Shad has to run away as well. They might have to give him another treatment. But the kill against Shadowma, that's exactly what they needed here. Alistair is getting a lot of damage thanks to the Ignite once more. But now they are starting to chase down. They are chasing Kel'thas. And here comes Red Axe with the base. Links, misses every single one of them, but the Roaches take down Kelthas in the end, and oh my god, Hazops with a quick blink, Rave gives this one up, and again <laughs> Leoric is back to business, oh my he god, Headshot! He will deny this for as long as he can, he's almost got Alistair there, but Alistair able to dodge out that March of the Black King, but is given time for Sokka and Jada to arrive back in this fight, and they have controlled the tribute area again, Shad is back, Sokka trying to kill, get the kill there, using his rewind, Nazibo got killed off higher up on the map, uh -oh, and but... Jada will go down as well though. Yes, but Red X, oh, Red X, the... oh my god! 
the water elemental, nearly eliminating him. And guess who's Soka. back? It's not Eminem. No, it's Soccer. And he moves in for an attempted kill, but Rafe is there. The problem is Sport Billy is too. Well, this Leoric is just so annoying for her team. While all this has been going on, though, their base has been under attack. They lost the shield and a bit of health on the core. There's Siege Giants in the bot lane. They finally cleared the catapults from top, though. And up at the top lane, we also have now the boss being attacked once again. Talking about damage, we have 72,000 hero damage on the side of Kel'Thas. And when we're looking at Vala, it is 74,000. One of the reasons why Nezebo is picked, as this is still a very much discussed topic, oftentimes in chat and a question that is asked by many viewers, we have 83,000 hero damage damage on the side of Nazebo and 109,000 siege damage being one of the best all-rounders here currently in this particular he is, game. He is the best all-rounder, most damage in the game and he's on the he currently behind team. Yeah, and at this point we're also now having of course the boss moving up at the top. Keep in mind that the core that we are seeing on the side of Huron already lost a few of his hit points down to 89%. Here comes once again Rocket, that flame strike hitting home the Phoenix immediately zoning them out with a 40 second cooldown. It's still one of the best heroics in the entire game. There's another tribute now down at the bottom of the map but nobody really has time for this one since the boss is the center of attention. This is where Rocket tries to even finish the game. Yeah, and they're going to charge in with this boss here. Web Blast has already been used. They're going onto the, the Zebo, but he's already managed to dash away Shad. Trying to focus out the boss. Nice devouring more, though. Does catch quite a few members of Rocket. They all come out. Bless Shield hits all of them. Jahanna trying to set up with the Flame Strike lads onto both damage dealers. Alistair getting dropped low. Gets into his hall, though, which will keep alive. But the core is going down so quickly, and it's going to be GG. And Rocket will take game number one. Really good game here by Rocket. 15 kills against 10 in the end. And it is the match for Rocket. They take the lead in the best of three series here at the Road to BlizzCon Qualifier. Very solid performance here by Rocket. They take the 1 0 lead in the best of three series. And we are now going into the second game. Once again, we have Leoric being played by Rocket. We are on Dragonshire right now, and Rocket is doing the same thing they did in the last game. They're running a double warrior setup for the front line, and Leoric really feels very good in those. He's usually not a tank that is being run as a solo tank, but in a double tank setup, he really shines, and that's exactly what they're currently using here. They picked up the Zagara as well, which is, of course, amazing on Dragonshire since you can position her at the top lane and then usually get access to one of the shrines immediately while well, Zagara can with a creep get decent vision so that she doesn't get ganked upon and also push in the top lane. Besides that they're running a Vala here for the additional damage and we're looking at Huron team we have a little bit of a different setup this time they picked up the Jaina they also have even more damage with a false set here in the mix a hero that is extremely popular these days and especially on maps where you need to have like global presence Dragonshire is just one of the maps where he excels. For Huron team of course here in the Road to BlizzCon Qualifier, everything's on the line. They need to win two in a row now. They need to take down Rocket first of all here on Dragonshire to have a chance to go into the third map because if they lose one more, then they are out of the tournament already. There are more tournaments that you can play for the Road to BlizzCon Qualification, but this is of course the first attempt and it's an important one for the team. So let's jump into game number two, Dragonshire, to find out if Rocket is able to win a second map or if Huron team ties the series up and forces out game number three. The game's on! Dragonshire is our map and we have Rocket going up against Huron team once again. Germany versus Spain and in soccer this would of course be a very one-sided match but in Heroes of the Storm it's actually a bit closer. So far the Germans are in the lead with the 1-0 here at the road to BlizzCon. It is the first qualifier and to the right side of the map we are having Huron team to the left side with Hazops on Zagara. We're seeing Rocket Sport beat again on Leoric, Chris on Vala, Zocke on Johanna, Shadomar and Malfuria and the Spaniards are starting things off here with Vibellino on Murden. We have Red X on Azebo, Rave as the support player for the team on Rega. Alistair this time on Jaina and Chat is playing Falset in this game. I'm Caldo and with me is Tetcha and we are bringing you the coverage here at the Road to Poliscon Europe. And instant, incredible aggression out of Vipolino there, which was 100% negated by the active trait of Soccer, the Iron Skin, just completely denying that Storm Bolt. Yeah, so level 1 talent once again for Leoric, reanimation, it's a standard talent we're seeing these days. And everybody's just in the mid lane, 5 man mid, not quite, it's only 4. And oftentimes on this map you see a rotation with 4 heroes between the mid and the bot lane, it's an 8 second rotation that you have there, you catch every single wave, and you also put a lot of pressure on your opponent and deny them rotation potential. And that's what both of them are actually trying to do right now. 
Yeah, but Falstad had to stay behind because they did miss a minion in that mid lane. So now they're clearing out the bot lane. And we're seeing Rockout just a bit more efficient with their rotation here. But now they finally split up into their standard lane setups. Where is Hasuobs going? Well, up at the top lane. Oh, over here. Look at that. Vibolino jumping away in the last second. Down there's Muradin. Sport Billy already using his drain hope. And up at the top lane, as already mentioned, Hazops is trying to just establish himself once again. A position around the shrine. Already picking this one. We're having Red X trying to counter push the lane, which is not easy against the Zagara. And whoa, just like that in the last second, Vibolino with a quick storm bolt to deny the channel of the Dragon Knight to Sport Billy. Oh, get in there. Oh, he didn't oh. What? <laughs> he missed the dwarf toss and now he's going for a little flight. And the Dragon Knight is just going to start pushing in this mid lane. But you know, we'll just keep stunning that. And his reverberation does affect the Dragon Knight and will reduce its attack speed. Wow, nice. Nice avoidance of the knockback there. Yeah, there was a 1 minute and 30 second Dragon Knight there. And of course, the first tower already going down. Rocket is in the lead in this series. This is a best of three. Horon, they have to step it up. They are a solid team. They are very strong. Of course, they are also up against a tough opponent here. But they really need to make some plays now because this game is not starting well. And to be honest, if they lose here on Dragonshire, then they're out of the tournament already. Yeah, so they need to start defending this better. We're already going to see two towers get uh, being got for this Dragon Knight. And the bot towers almost going down just to the standard lane push. And two towers is about the minimum you should get with a Dragon Knight. You preferably want to get more, but it's the minimum you should get if you're being very heavily defended. Exactly. So we have two towers already taken in the mid lane. It's nearly an entire level lead that we're seeing for Rocket at this point. Once again, it's Feral Heart on Rega, no Shadow Wolf, which oftentimes is taken after Spirit Walker's Grace. But Feral Heart still the standard talent for most players. The bot lane is being pressured. Sokka actually very low and goes down, overextending a bit on his Johanna, and just like that, he is being dropped. Yep, yeah, he did not have his trait available, so he did go down. Falstad taking the Vampiric Assault. On the level 4 talent. Yeah, so with Falstead here with Vampiric Assault, this is actually something that oftentimes has Ops did. Of course, in this case, it's Shad playing the hero from the opposing team. But if you go for this, then we will see on level 7, of course, Secret Weapon, later on Giant Killer on 13, and Falstead really starts to completely go crazy once that level 20 is reached and he has access to Nexus Frenzy. Yeah, that's really good. We're going to see Leoric going in here onto Red X. Trying to get him with the drain home. It's not enough. And now Sport Billy is in a bit of trouble. He does not have his Wraith walk up and will get taken down. Red X going to be able to be back here and get a load of health. And in this case, Mountain King more than Skeleton King. Yeah, definitely. I mean, Sport Billy, I really like that he's using his uh, haunt uh, so that he can move in and try and take down a target. I mean, he's always using it coming from one of these bushes to surprise the opponent. So that's pretty cool on his side. But it backfired in this case now. They hit level 7 a bit faster, Rocket that is, but not too much. It's still two kills against zero in favor of the Spanish teams there. They have, might have had a, a bit of a shaky start, but they are starting to stabilize, even though they already lost quite a few structures. They are still on roughly the same level as their opponent, just a bit behind an experience. No cleanse coming in from Malfurion here. Rave getting focused down, but will be able to get out. He is also Rhaegar, can just run away in dog mode. But yeah, no cleanse considering they are up against a Muradin, who has a lot of CC potential. And Jaina, when she hits that late levels with that root, could be a bit of a pain without the cleanse. Yeah, we have Renewal, by the way, taken, of course, again on Leoric, so he has that extra healing potion. One of the cool things is that while you're in ghost form, while you're dead, you can still use the ability and therefore regenerate a bit faster. Shant, Alistair, and Vipolino are starting to move down to the bot lane for an attempted gank against Zocke. Moving in, Iron Skin already used, and Chris is trying to help out with a quick multi-shot here. But it's a 5 versus 3, and this is just a fight that they can't win. Up at the top lane, it's Zagara versus Nazebo, but Zagara seems to be winning this one down here. It's a very different matter. On the other hand, it's Ooh, 4 versus 4, and Zocke is in trouble. He's trying to back out, though, will get the heal and has the amplified healing talent, so he's able to get out of there pretty nicely. Vipolito also having to retreat, taking a moon fire, dropping him very low. Sport Billy is not able to drain enough with that drain hope and does get taken down. In comes Soccer again. Looks like they may want to try and go on to Alistair again, but they have no follow up to this. Shadow Man looks like he wants to try and sneak the Dragonite here, but Raven, Shad, and Alistair, in fact, have something to say about this. Sport Billy from behind, though, onto Jada. 
Yeah, once again, moving in. Oh, a nice go straight in with the Rathrog and tries to take down other stuff, but the kill falls. And even before that, once again, Vipolino with a quick storm bolt, slowing him down here. Has even Piercing Bolt taken to level 7, which is going to help with that. Soccer moves in with a good damn end! Jaina! Oh my god! Alistair, the moonfire. the moonfire about to take him out, but also this one is successful. And another Dragon Knight for Rocket. And <laughs> once again, dodging out the way of that Dragon Knight. But very nice steal. Faustad going down to the bot lane to try and defend against Chris, who's still just chilling down here and is going to be able to get this fort. The minions will get it on their own. Chris gets stunned, though, and is taking a lot of damage. Pops is straight just to deal some damage, but still goes down. That was a really important kill. Nazeev, on the other hand, taking down as well up at the top lane, and that's, of course, a bit of a problem. But we have finally have also the level 10 abilities now ready for the Spanish team. Huron with the Gagantian and the Water Elemental. Of course, it's the Hinterland Blast on... Falstead, nice jump here, dodging the punt from Sport Billy's Dragonite. But in this case, of course, the mid fort might still go down. But the Dragonite has to move away. Leoric knows that he's not going to be able to survive this if he's being slowed and dropped, at least not when there are three heroes around. But as there's only Bipolino left, he shouldn't have an issue. Yeah, he does have his Rayfork with those hardened bone, that hardened bone talent, so he will be able to get out a bit more efficiently than others. Hunter Killer immediately going down to Alistair, having to drop his Blizzard so that it doesn't chase him, because he was already quite low. Four kills against two in favor of Huron, but they just lose too many structures right now. The objectives are controlled by Rocket, and that's the most important things for them at this point. But if the fights go the same way that they did for the last few minutes, then we should see Huron in a position where they can come back. They're only one level behind. It's annoying, especially once that Rocket hits level 13. But as long as they are keeping it up and uh, winning those fights, I think Huron will definitely have a good shot here. Later on in the game, they will be able to rely on Falstead even more. But this double tank front line that they already had to deal with in the last game is definitely proving to be a bit of a problem. Yep, yeah, but like you said, that giant killer is going to make a huge difference once they get later, assuming the Shad does take it and isn't just baiting us out. Right now it's easy camp versus easy camp, but Rocket okay, have quite a few more people in this bottom lane to defend it. But a large rotation coming in from the mid lane to deal with that easy camp and maybe thinking about raiding the hard camp while Leoric pushes the mid lane. Yeah, we have the bot lane now taken. Very nice approach here from Huron. Stealing away the Bruiser camp, and Leoric is, of course, in the mid lane, dropping the fort. They have level 13 now. And with 13, it's once again the Frost Shot we're having in the, si in the case of Johanna now. Spell Shield. And as you can see, Frost Shot here, as well as Crushing Hope once more. Leoric moves in, slows down a Zebo, and can he escape? Home. Oh, yeah, that seems like overkill, but he's still going to die. Able to get the Nazi bow though, and is just gonna try and gain some health back just using that uh, Drain Hope there while dead to revive quicker. Exactly, and we have also Hazops now moving in. Of course, that top shrine is gonna be taken by the red team in just a second, but Sport Billy is about to be back and he is staying because Sorkin and Hazops are rotating over. And here comes the Condemn, they're going straight for Jaina. He's trying He's to survive out. now within a quick <laughs> double blizzard. Shed is moving in now as well, and Sokka has to rush back. Nice more from Hasuop, giving Sokka a good chance to escape. And now Vipolino is kind of separating for his team, but they are now here with him and Figaro. Now in a bit, he's retreating, hit that blast, does not land, Soccer. gonna take a blizzard to the base though. Yeah, it's a 5 versus 4 in this situation, at least for another second. Shad is in the back still, and he went for Giant Killer, of course, at level 13. That's going to be an amazing talent against Sport Billy on Leoric and Johanna. Oh, once again, they're moving back here. Everybody low on the side of the Spanish team. Alistair's in trouble, and down goes Jaina and the Stormbolt to try and cover the retreat. But Red X gets healed in the last second, turns around for another attack, and they just barely keep them alive here. And Falstad, instead of kiting there, just pieced the hell out and flew down to the bot lane to grab that shrine to make sure that there will not be a Dragon Knight for Rockat. Yeah, Chris is there. Falstad might think about moving in. The problem is that Chris is not alone. Malfurion is with him. And Chris already using his arsenal here, his multi-shot, to make sure that nobody is hiding in those bushes. In the mid lane, we have Red X trying to contest Soccer, but it might be another Dragonite. It will be another Dragonite by Shadow Mar. Actually, they have to. They can't even wait. They don't want to put their only healer into the Dragonite, so they rotate over, put Hazorps into the statue. And just like this, it is going to be the first keep that is going to be attacked in this game now. Yep, rolling in here, going to start doing quite a bit of damage. Like you said, with that multi-shot, with the, the fire breath, 
from the Dragonite. They're going to be able to push this down pretty easily once again. Ruridin baiting out the charge from the Dragonite and allowing it to take a lot of damage from the side of Huron. Yeah, the Dragonite is dropping so fast, already down to 20%. That goes to one tower and might be able to complete the process against the entire wall. Yes, takes it down. Only one of the towers is still alive. We believe no jumping in with another quick storm ball. Has to move away. Gets immediately rooted down and has to be cleansed so that he can survive here. Uh-oh, the shield against Nazebo. He's getting healed with an ancestral healing, but the more against Jaina. Ah, can't really work as a setup since they are pushing back Rocket for now, but Rocket has the level 16 talent at this point. And now have that exposed keep. So they're in a very good position to try and charge that at a later time. Once they have the Dragon Knight, they will steal the easy camp from Huron as they still have to stay in their base to defend all the lanes that are pushed. And they're moving over to their own easy camp now. They go straight for the Siege Giant camp here. They will have a lot of Siege Golems down to the bot lane. Falset, of course, can use his flying ability to just soak a different lane up at the top to try to give his team a bit more experience because that's exactly what they need at this point. They need to make sure that they are closing the gap in experience. They have five kills against four. When it comes to the kill count, Huron is still in a better position. The problem is really what we are seeing on the side of the structures. They haven't even taken down a single keep. Yep, and in the meantime, we're going to see Rocket just in this spot lane, pushing in a Vipolino, getting drained so much thanks to that drain hope. Doesn't matter how much health you have, the Auric goes off percentage health with that ability. And he's having to Wraith Walk out of there for now, as he was taking a little bit of damage, but that's still both towers and another exposed keep by uh, Team Rocket here. Yeah, those two giants are going to be done for in a second. There comes the second Blizzard wave, dropping them. But it is the move in that level 16 talent is being used here. And already the blessed shield used, so a few of their abilities are down. And this is of course a bit scary. If you actually get a more or a blessed shield, and then immediately afterwards, Sport Believe follows up with this March of the Black King, there's a lot of potential damage that you can dish out in one of those fights. Yeah, but that's what they've been looking to do, but most of the Moors have been used seemingly, seemingly as a more defensibility Sport Believe. Once again, just holding the front line here, as he is very, very strong and very, very survival here. Once again, Ray walking out. Looks like he may want to just march the back king through, king through here. Nice straight from Chris, but only really landed it on Alistair. Duplito trying to hold this. The Hinterland Blast landing on Hasselwald. Yeah, and at this point, they're still fighting for the level 16. They finally have it right now with the overdrive that can't be used. Muradin has picked Stoneform, of course, what? to help it with the sustain. The March of the Black King moving in. The kill against Falstead. Vipolino, on the other hand, takes down Zagara. He is in the thick of things once again. The Frost Block, Ice Block here, saving Jaina for a second, but then she gets just plummeted into the ground. Shadow Mar low on Malfurion. Everybody rushing away, and still Rocket with the two level lead in the game here as Malfurion, as a Muradin, is getting away or is he <laughs> so close but Billy, he does it anyway and while this is happening socket was able to steal the dragonite and he's able to easily take down this keep moves into the middle takes down the keep and just like that they're way ahead once again Six kills against six, but it is Rocket controlling the tributes over and over again. The third Dragonite for them already in the game. And now with the advantage that they have, they move in to maybe even drop keep number two, or at least apply some of the damage. That's what they're trying here. They move back for now, and it is still a fight for Huron to just stay alive in this game. Once that they are on level 20 versus level 20, they might be able to make a bit of a comeback here. Even now, they could take one of those team fights. but once that Rocket has level 20, Huron is going to be in a much better problem than they already are. Poor well, Billy, in a very aggressive position, once again, looking to try and get a slow for maybe a setup for his team. Vipolino and Shad, both here, manages to slow Shad and is going to drain him while he Wraith walks out, so he gets some damage and still is able to reposition himself to a better area. Alistair is waiting down here for a potential really flank or somebody coming his way. Zagara, on the other hand, moving already up to the top to deep push the top lane. And if Hazoff is successful there, they might even get the experience that they need for level 20. But Huro knows exactly that they need to make a play right now. And they move in at the bot lane while there's no level 20 for Rocket just yet to try to drop at least one of the keeps. They go straight for the Auric, but he already wraps walks out of there. And they are moving up against the keep once more, trying to drop it and gain at least a few experience points before for the level 20 talent hits for their opponent. Vipolino lands the stun onto Mafia, but loses his life through. Way too aggressive there. 
We're happy to see Nazibo pop his sprint, but Sport Millie's not done. Charges in, gets the slow and crisp. Trying to vision Ancestral is in time, but he's still slowed from the frost shots. Yeah, and Alastor oh, is no. getting bored <laughs> while Red X being attacked by Vala. The Zebo dropped and the ice block for now saving Jaina, but and not for long. There's the kill and bam, she gets slammed to the side. Nice Hinterland Blast, but unfortunately, of course, for them, it's not only the level 20 talent that we're seeing come into play with the Storm Shield negating the damage, but also everybody was so much on like full health that that Hinterland Blast didn't really do anything. Yeah, and Rockat trying to go in for the end of the game here. They have everyone up. Faustad trying to do any damage he can. He is being drained hoped by Sport Billy. Sport Billy not caring in the slightest. And everyone else is just focusing the core. There's no one up who can stop this. And it's going to be GG. And Rockat will take game number two and move on to the next round. Game number two of the 2-0 series. Well played by Rocket. They take down her own team and are now in the round of 16 of the Road to BlizzCon tournament. Very solid performance today by Rocket. Really well played here. They take the 2-0 against Turon and therefore the Spanish team out of the tournament already. Rocket with another victory. He advances now to the round of 16. So very well played by them and congratulations. Pretty solid performance and actually awesome to see Leoric being played twice already. I guess we are probably going to see him a bit more often in the upcoming days because that qualify is of course still ongoing. We have two matches each and every day and next week there's going to be the finals from the top eight onwards right now this is of course it at least for this best of three series i hope that you guys enjoyed it and i hope that you enjoyed seeing leoric in action if you did make sure that you give the video a thumbs up on youtube and guys i hope that you already subscribed to color tv because if you haven't done it yet then make sure to hit that sub button and i'm going to see you guys next time with more heroes of the storm action here especially of course with the road to blizzcon qualifier the first one out of three so see you guys soon with more action here on the channel have a good day bye bye